So if this blindness is of the mind, we need to understand the mind so that we can remove the blindness. If the blindness is of the mind, then if I don't understand the mind, I might not be, I might not sustain the intelligence enough to attack the strategy of the enemy against the mind. For you and for the men you will, you will disciple. Suddenly, if you notice as a believer, if you notice an hindrance or if you notice a setback in one area of your spiritual life, if you notice a setback in the area of your health or in your finances, why is it that everybody shares testimony about money in Irene? Now let me never share. Did they use my head to do parrots? I don't know if you understand. It's, I just spoke in tongues. Did they use my head to do replacement? Why? Everybody shared testimonies about healing. Why is that I don't? Why is that I don't get it? Everybody shared testimonies about ministry of angels. Now let me angel never appear. So, is it that my angels have been withdrawn or did they sleep? It could just be a blindness. It could just be a blindness in a particular area. It could just be that that place has been veiled. And if you don't understand how the mind works, you would may not ever be able to remove the veil. Because the veil that is of the mind is not removed by saying out. If it can be removed by saying out, then it means that I can pray you into a level of knowledge. Hallelujah. People have been asking me questions about the covenant after that meeting. I didn't know you guys really needed to hear that sermon. You have been getting questions. So, hey, Papa, so are you saying that? Are you saying that I own? Are you saying that me and God? No, it comes down. February is almost here. I'll come back to the topic, then we'll do justice. Praise God. So this morning, I want to continue on the gospel. I just called it the gospel. Um, I started by teaching you that there are about five gospels in the bible but all of them all of them caves they all cave into one they all cave into one it's just one gospel but these gospels have faculties am i right good remember that the talking church is the winning church okay so we have the gospel of salvation do you remember yes, all right it is the power of god unto salvation mm. it's the power of god unto salvation the gospel is not salvation is a power of god we have the gospel of christ are you looking at your note we have the gospel of christ i told you that the gospel of christ we have the gospel of peace we have the gospel of peace which paul quoted from the book of isaiah i told you the best way to make your feet beautiful how is it say it again i'm not hearing which gospel the gospel of peace if you do that a lot people into pedicure and manicure will lose their job so please <laughs> hallelujah so you preach the gospel of peace there's another gospel in the scriptures that were found it's called the gospel of the what kingdom to the gospel of the kingdom the gospel of the kingdom is the gospel that transforms is a gospel that comes with signs and wonders. It doesn't leave a man the same way he is met. It was the gospel of the kingdom that was preached to, to Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, the task collector. Do you remember him? Good. The short man. No, sorry. The brief man. It was the gospel of the kingdom that was preached to him. And the man did not become tall, but he was changed. Praise God. Can the gospel make the short man tall today? There should be unity of faith. <laughs> Can the gospel make a man tall today? A short man, can he make him tall? Yes, Be careful of your answer because after service, the brief people in church will come and see me. <laughs> so I'm careful about my answer. Can the gospel of the kingdom make a man tall? Yes, I'm looking in this direction because there are brief people in different parts of the church. Can the gospel of the kingdom make <laughs> it can make a man tall? If it can make the sick healed, <laughs> glory to Jesus. Mm, hallelujah. Praise God. And there's the gospel of God. We found in scripture. There's a called the Bible. There's a gospel called the gospel of God. There's a gospel called the gospel of God. I don't need, I don't want to explain all of that. You can get them in part one. It's available on Telegram and on YouTube. Um, two Sundays ago when I taught this, we also mentioned how the gospel of the kingdom transformed a, a, a whole town. Do you remember? That town where they don't have um, prisons 
you can just open your boutique, put the price tag on it, somebody comes, picks the clothes, drop the money, and goes. Right in our world today. You know, there was a time I had a conversation with a believer, and this believer, he has planned to steal in Zion. He don't understand. The guy said to me that even if he gets to heaven and they don't give him the space that belongs to Father Abraham, Father Abraham will not suspect the time he will enter his room or his kitchen and take something. Because he will not expect that there will be anything like that. All he wants to do is just enter. When I enter there, I know how to enter people's house. I say, Jesus is Lord. <laughs> Can you imagine that? <laughs> even in heaven. Ha! Ah, there's work to be done. No? <laughs> even in heaven even in heaven but it's the gospel of the kingdom that transforms believer to the point that they can live like the scripture so last two weeks i taught you that our goal our message as christians is not just to win souls when um, the assignment is to disciple men the assignment is to disciple men and the part of the gospel that emphasizes uh, discipleship is the gospel of the kingdom that is the gospel that emphasized discipleship. That was the gospel Jesus was preaching when he began to call his disciples. When we go around winning soul, it's like a man God has stood to build a house and all he did was just bought a land, cleared the land and left it. Have you begun the project? Yes. Is the land for you now or for, your, for God that you bought it for? Yes, the land is for God. But God didn't ask you to buy a land, he asked you to build a house. So the mandate is not to win souls. We have emphasized soul winning, beautiful. But the mandate is to disciple men. In Matthew 28, he says, I've sent you. Go and make disciples. He didn't say go and make souls. Go and make disciples. We have so emphasized that part so much that even in church, when I was growing up, they asked me, where is your soul? You know, we used to joke about it then when I was a younger believer. I, I, I was talking to another brother that is also in Trinity. Bracken, where are your souls? I say, how many souls do I have? It's only one soul I have now. The pastor will come and ask you now, where are your souls? Because those times, my pastor will make sure you don't come to church alone. You must come to church with your... So one day my pastor said, Fei, where is your soul? I said, my soul is inside. <laughs> I said, I came my soul. I came spirit, soul, and but I didn't leave anyone at home. If I slap you, get out, go and bring your souls. <laughs> Praise God. We are so emphasized souls, but that is not the word we should emphasize. What emphasize is discipleship. It says go and make disciples. So in the real sense, every believer should be a discipler, except the one that just got born again today. Every believer should be a discipler. You should be a disciple. Then when you look around, that's my disciple, not your soul. Hallelujah. You should be discipling men. Today, as we go further in God's word on the gospel, I found another importance of the gospel of the kingdom. And the importance I found about this is that uh, as much as we are expecting Jesus to return, there are prophecies all around about Jesus coming. Some believe he's going to come very soon. Some believe he's coming before the year 2030 and um, when some people heard that some people have formed a prayer team because they want to have their babies they want to get married before 2030 and so some people are praying that jesus should not come and praise god should he come before 2030 you didn't miss your lord you don't, I thought you love him. If you love somebody, you would pray for the person to come. It should not come yet, Abby. It should, you, want to, you want to marry. You want to. When it comes, everything will be sweeter than what you have now. You want to disciple men. <laughs> you want to win souls. That's why it should not come. Mm. Jesus, see your people. They are not my people. They are your people. <laughs> I don't know about these ones. <laughs> some are praying for him to come. Some are saying it will not come. 
He will not come yet. Some are praying for him to come. Some have said by prophecy he should be here between now and 2030. I'm not going to give a word about that. But one thing for sure I found in scripture, Matthew 24, verse 30, verse 14. The Bible says, and these gospel, these gospel, it was specific. He didn't say the gospel. He says, these gospel, these gospel of the kingdom will be preached. Another version says, must be preached. Another version says, shall be preached. In all the world, as a witness, as a testimony to all the nations, and then, and then the end will come. The Bible says the end will come. Listen carefully to me. Uh, I don't think it's too big for you. When the Bible says the end will come, it's not called the end of the world. When the Bible says the end will come, it's in this text, it means that we will be done with our assignment. And the only reason the believer is on earth is because you have an assignment. The reason you were not raptured the day you got born again, because all that God wants is that you are born again and you are with him. The reason you were not raptured the day you received Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior is because you have an assignment. So the end that will come is the end of all things. Are you following me? The word end here is the same word you found in Hebrews that explain the consummation of all things. When you see end in scripture, it doesn't always mean the end. Then fire will catch the earth. Then everybody's running helter skelter. That's what the Bible is saying. He says the end will come. There will be consummation of all things. Our assignment will be done on earth. And when our assignment is done on earth, the king will show up in the clouds. And men will be raptured. Are you following me? So it means that of all the gospel I showed you in scripture, there is only one gospel on, on, which, the, the, the prof, on which the prophecy of Jesus returned anchors on. There is only one gospel that can hinder the return of Jesus. There is only one gospel that is inched on prophecy or prophecy is inched on it. It's the gospel of the kingdom. If the church had read this properly, we'll see do crusades, but we wouldn't just do crusades, pack out 10,000 people, 10,000 souls won in the north, and then they are left, they're left like that. And those guys, they don't even understand the gospel. They've received the life of Jesus, beautiful. Then the next time, another Benihin or another Rinabonke comes to the same area, the same territory, another 10,000 people packs out. The same people recycling, the same set of people, but they are not discipled. The end will not come. I was discussing with someone about the gospel and the person said to me, um, I won't mention any name of any book, but there is this devotional that has traveled to all the part of the earth and now the devotional is everywhere in all languages. So we can say almost everyone on the earth has heard about Jesus. I said, no, the return of Jesus is not the word hearing about him. That's what you have been told. But that's not what the Bible says. Because hearing about Jesus is not the gospel of the kingdom. The return of the world is not the word. It's not, the return of Jesus is not in on the word hearing about him. Mm. Hearing about him is the gospel of peace. Are you following me? That's not what the Bible says. Hearing about Jesus is not the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom is demonstrating Jesus. He says, when this is done, then the end will come. Then we'll be done with our assignment here. Then we'll be set to be taken away. So if you want Jesus to come, the gospel that must be preached is the gospel of the kingdom. Praise God. Praise God. There is an attack against the gospel. If this attack prospers perpetually, prophecies will be injured. It will be injured. If this attack prospers perpetually, continually, prophecies will be ended. And I just showed you one prophecy that will be ended if the attack against the gospel prospers. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 4, the Bible speaks about a veil and a blindness against the gospel. Look at it. Let's read. Verse 3, do you have it on your screen? Read from everyone. Want to go. But even if our gospel is what? Veiled. It is veiled to those who are perishing. Hmm. Read on. Whose minds 
the God of this age as blinded who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God should shine on them there are two strategies rather with which the enemy attacks the gospel you can see it in your scripture I'm preaching it slowly so that you can get it one is the veil and the other is what you saw it one is the veil the other is what the blindness it says if our gospel be veiled it is veiled to those who are perished in our says whose mind the god of this world has blinded so the gospel is veiled if it is veiled a set of people are experiencing blindness may we understand this before we go ahead what does it mean to veil or a veil is called to veil means to cover it means to conceal it means in this context it means to in the knowledge of a thing it means to in the knowledge of a thing to veil is to in the knowledge of a thing so when the bible says if the gospel is veiled it's saying that if the knowledge of the gospel is in that are you following me to blind or the word blinded here means to have a cloudy perspective in that it doesn't mean that you have not heard the gospel at all it doesn't mean that there's no church in your neighborhood but your perspective about the gospel is cloudy you can't say for sure what the gospel is and funny enough there are many christians in church that can't even tell what the gospel is you know you were born again you were born again five years ago three years ago respectfully some of you you didn't even know what the gospel was until you came to irene you were born in church you didn't know so you have a cloudy perspective about the gospel it's not like you are totally ignorant about it no but your perspective your idea about it is just cloudy this happens by blowing smoke on a screen so it causes spiritual blindness so if people are not believing the gospel we are preaching why are they not believing the reason they do not believe is because the gospel is either veiled or the gospel is what is blinded or they are blinded the gospel is veiled or they are blinded so this is a strategy it's either the enemy does something to the gospel or he leaves the gospel and it does something to the people are you following me it's either he hinders the gospel or he leaves the gospel and it does something to the people okay blindness is a spiritual thing but this blindness has physical indices it can the blindness of the gospel or the veil of the gospel veil too is also a spiritual thing but it also has physical indices the reason i'm explaining this carefully is so that you can prosper with the gospel or the gospel can prosper well in your hands that is why i'm explaining this carefully follow me there are times you look at blindness or the veil against the gospel and you just say this is totally spiritual you are right but there are times when when you can find logical and physical explanation to this veil or this blindness there are times when it's so spiritual that there is no logical explanation i'll give you examples the times when you find a preacher preaching the gospel and there is a storm why is there a storm you cannot explain the reason for the storm there are times when there will just be losses of resources and you don't know why these things are happening there are times when the enemy attacks you on every side and you don't know why he's attacking you you've not done anything wrong you look at yourself by yourself you have kept every principle that you know but there's just a storm around you the reason for the storm is nothing but 
the fact that you are a preacher of the gospel the reason for the storm is nothing except the fact that you are a believer that has the gospel in his mouth the reason for it is just because you are discipling men there are times when you cannot explain the storm there are times when you cannot explain the losses sometimes even the loss of a child can happen and the reason will not be the fact that you have done anything wrong it might just be the enemy trying to hinder the gospel it happens to preachers it happens to believers you might be the light bearer in your office and the enemy will do everything for you to be sacked you look at it and say why did my boss fire me you can't explain it the only reason is the gospel there's a sister that does not pick your call after work that you are trying to preach to the only time you have the opportunity to disciple her is when you meet at work the devil says this work I will take it away and because he has men everywhere in high places in politics in your workplace he makes sure that you lose the job so you will come back the job is lost God is celebrating you clapping for you expecting you to brace up and trust him for another you are crying and you say God for every bit everything I've been doing for you uh, what is happening you are not seeing the big picture there are times when the attack against the gospel is not logical the times follow me carefully the enemy can hinder the gospel by making sure there is <laughs> by, I, that happened, this has happened to me I wrote it down in my note the times the enemy hinders the gospel by killing the person you are trying to preach to you know, if it doesn't happen to you then you have not been preaching that time when I trust God for one brother one uncle this uncle must receive Jesus I'm praying every day, doing everything. Now, okay, ah, there's a function at home now in Ekiti. I'm going to Ekiti. I'm from Ekiti, by the way. I'm not an Igbo man. Praise God. What do you think I'm Igbo? Do I look like Igbo in your eyes? I look Igbo. I mean, don't worry, I'm both. <laughs> my great grandfather is Igbo. <laughs> my great grandmother, Usa. <laughs> then my great auntie, South South. So uh, I'm finally Yoruba. <laughs> now, I told myself, I'm going to see this uncle in the village and make sure he believes the gospel then suddenly before you get there you hear the news he drank pami and he died is it the first time he's drinking pami no he has been drinking pami for a long time but this time pami killed him no it wasn't pami that killed him the enemy in that the gospel so if you're going to make sure the gospel is not in that the gospel you are preaching is not in that there are strategies, there are ways to make sure that the enemy does not hinder the gospel. There are physical indices we can look at. You can look at blindness against the gospel and say, every blindness against the gospel, I remove now in the name of Jesus. Every veil against the gospel, I remove now in the name of Jesus. That is a good prayer. But if you have listened to me for some time, you will understand that prayer must be specific and earnest. For it to be effective that is not so specific a prayer that's not so specific a prayer if we be, if we can know how the enemy in that's the gospel we will not have to pray against the gospel being in that we would just simply in that the strategy of the enemy you did get it if we can know the strategy the enemy uses in hindering the gospel we will not start praying lord every entrance of the against the gospel removed no you just know this is how he hinders so you hinder his strategy it's like a football pitch you know how i forgot the names of the coaches morino or whatever you know how he plays the match so instead of coming to the field to attack his boys attack his strategy did you get that after this series there will be a greater number of souls and disciples to your account Amen. I said there will be a greater number of souls and disciples to your account Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen. the wicked men and women in your family will come to Christ Amen. I said they will receive the life of Jesus Amen. take note that blindness is not in a man's own regenerated spirit blindness is the thing of the mind 
Blindness is not in the spirit of the man you are preaching to. It's a thing of the mind. So his blindness is a thing of the mind. Why is it then called spiritual blindness? These are the questions I asked myself when I study. Why is it not called mind blindness? The reason is that the reason it's called spiritual blindness is because the goal of that blindness is to hinder spiritual truth. Not just of the gospel, but even for you as a believer. I hope you know that it's just it's not just the I hope you know that it's not just the man that has not received Christ that experiences spiritual blindness. Many Christians, born again, tongue talking, devil casting, still experience spiritual blindness. But blindness is not a spiritual, it's not in the spirit, it's in the mind. The second reason it's called spiritual blindness is because the mind is the only instrument that a man has that can renew his spirit, his soul, and his body. Romans chapter number 12 verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of... You will be transformed, you. The you that will be transformed is you, holistically. Not you, your mind. Not you, your body. Not you, your spirit. Your spirit will experience renewal. Your mind will experience renewal. Your body will experience renewal. Have you ever read an information and started feeling strength in your body? Yes. Sir. Yes. The mind has the ability to renew every part of your essence. Mm. Whatever affects your mind affects your whole being. That is why it is called spiritual blindness. So if this blindness is of the mind, we need to understand the mind so that we can remove the blindness. Are you ready for me? I'm just trying to get into the center of my message. If the blindness is of the mind, then if I don't understand the mind, I might not be, I might not sustain the intelligence enough to attack the strategy of the enemy against the mind. For you, and for the men you will, you will disciple. Suddenly, if you notice as a believer, if you notice an hindrance, or if you notice a setback in one area of your spiritual life, if you notice a setback in the area of your health, or in your finances, why is it that everybody shares testimony about money in Irene? Now let me never share. Did they use my head to do parrots? I don't know if you understand. It's, I just spoke in tongues. Did they use my head to do replacement? Why? Everybody shared testimonies about healing. Why is that I don't? Why is that I don't get it? Everybody shared testimonies about ministry of angels. Now let me angel never appear. So, is it that my angels have been withdrawn or did they sleep? Why? It could just be a blindness. It could just be a blindness in a particular area. It could just be that that place has been veiled. And if you don't understand how the mind works, you would may not ever be able to remove the veil. Because the veil that is of the mind is not removed by saying out. If it can be removed by saying out, then it means that I can pray you into a level of knowledge. So a medical doctor that understands medicine a lot can just look at Brother Ken or Sister Shin or Brother Tolu and whatever, whoever, and say, This brother. By the time I'm done praying for you for one year, you'll be a doctor. You'll know, even if they will not satisfy you in the school, you'll know everything about medicine. Is it possible? Uh -huh. So if that is impossible, it's the same with spirituals. So what does the Bible say about the mind? I looked up five components of the mind, basically. I'm a trained psychologist, so I understand a little about the mind and all of that. I had my MS in psychology. But I just want to give you a brief understanding of the mind so that you can understand this a little. Because these components of the mind can hinder your victory. Personally, as a believer, it can also hinder the victory of the man you are discipling. It can end up the gospel in the life of the person you're discipling. If you are discipling somebody, you're trying to get the person to church, get the person to study his God's word, help the person become a better believer. But this guy is not just changing. This lady is just not changing. You can look at the person and say, which area of his mind is the enemy using against him? 
Are you following me? There are five components of the mind. Quickly. There's what we call the memory. The memory is a faculty by which the mind stores and remembers information. Your memory is, is, is part of your mind, but it's one part of your mind that I know follows you into eternity. Because when you get to eternity, you will remember this summer. And the part of your mind that will help you remember is your memory. In paradise, they remember the things that happen on earth. So don't think that all the bad things you are doing for me, now when we get to heaven, I will forget. <laughs> Who will remember? Who will still remember? It's like, clap for Jesus. <laughs> Woof. I'm a pastor. <laughs> I have the right to say it. Nobody can fight me. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Who will remember these things? You know the song says we will see ourselves and we will remember ourselves. Uh huh. Your memory. So a man's blindness against the gospel, against truth in God's word, can be the result of his memory. Maybe something he was taught as a child, something he remembers from childhood. It could be the reason for the blindness. You are preaching the gospel to him in every area. You are explaining this is how to walk in dominion. This is how to be a great disciple of Jesus. But after you are done, he just remembers something. It might even be, uh, it might be uh, a disappointing event from someone spiritual. Maybe, the, sorry to say, maybe the person was raped by a pastor many years ago. So now he's an unbeliever and you're trying to preach the gospel to the guy and the girl is like... After, after preaching on the gospel, it's okay. He just remembers that. And that memory fights the gospel. The person could remember that my mother was a tighter all her life. Like someone talked to me. I do not I say it respectfully. I do not count my mother as a giver of my kind. I am an extraordinary giver by the grace of God. But my mother was a faithful tighter. And she is. Because I remember I paid a tithe for her. So, if for example, I'm not disappointed, God has not disappointed me in any way because I have clear revelation about him. But for example, as a child like that, if suddenly maybe you were disappointed about in finances and all of that, with everything my mother did, my mother was a great tither. I tithed for my mother when she was sick, she was still tithing, and this is what I'm experiencing. That memory can grow up with you to adulthood and you might fight a particular revelation of God I even say for myself there was a time in my life when I stopped fighting I always come out and say the truth and even though I came into some kind of revelation information not revelation <laughs> information I said okay I don't have to fight I don't have to do this and all of that and I said if my mother had fighted How she be? Until in one of my encounters, the Lord said to me Himself, He said, "Go and study this. Go and study that. Go and study this." And after the studies, I came back and I started tightening again, and I've not stopped. One of the tools the enemy used against me was memory. Aside from information, memory was included. Because you can't be a faithful giver without tithing. You can be a big giver without tithing, but you can't be a faithful giver without tithing. Because the goal of tithing is consistency, nothing else. Did you get that? So the enemy uses the mind. The mind. So if I understand that the enemy can use the faculty called memory to enter the gospel, I begin to look at the person I'm talking to. I'll check my own life. Is there something in my memory that is fighting this revelation? And you may have it. The part of your mind again that is so important, you should know, is your imagination. <laughs> imaginative people. It's very beautiful to be imaginative. Imagination is what I define as the ability of your mind to be creative or to have external ideas is to have external ideas. You never saw anything, but you can't imagine. So you look at the sister because of the way she dresses. A lot of my sisters here dress decently. But you look at the sister because of the way she dresses and comes to church. Eh? You just imagine. She looks like a lady you have watched the movie. Just imagine that she's a slut, she's a prostitute. 
you just imagine you just imagine that's why christians must make being beautiful being polish being swagalicious we must make it normal so that the world can know that that is not how you define us i uh, know we must make it normal christianity is not in covering your body no we cover our bodies but that is not the essence that's how we are defined so you can use your imagination you just somebody came to visit brother david and the person just came out of the room and the person is a female That's, why are you looking up like that? That's the way Bishop used to look up when he wants to see visions. Hmm. See, Brother David, I honor you. Have you done Papa's assignment this week? Have you done your workers' assignment? Did you have you been joining CYD prayers? I said, why are you asking? Because if you have been joining, hmm, let me not say anything. God bless you. I'll see you in church on Sunday. <laughs> Imaginations. Imaginations. You can just imagine those people that come to church that carry Jesus on their head. In Lebak English, carry on your head, carry on their head. They are, they are just hypocrites. Your imagination can end that things. There is no real information, but it's just imagination. I used to tell people stop imagining things. You might be hearing a sound that wonder can be pleasing to a movie the sound of the keyboard might sound like something that, mm, they're doing something that i was saying mm, mm, mm. what what is mm, 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 you are hearing what does it mean what if it was the keyboard that was playing stop telling your neighbor stop imagining things <laughs> <laughs> there are some people when they are worshiping god they worship god with tears we shout and say let me just remain holy this morning, please. <laughs> Your imagination can hinder the truth of God's word. Thought. The, the thought is an, is an idea or opinion produced by thinking. It occurs suddenly in the mind. So a thought just drops into your heart. It can hinder things. The preaching of God's word is coming to you right now. A thought can just come to hinder the gospel. Many of you know that you wonder when the preaching of God's word happens. You are only here like 20% out of the whole sermon. You, are, you just remember your village. You come back again. Remember what you hit after church. Remember, you remember your boss in the office. Remember, ah, remember you have not called your boyfriend. Remember, you remember. You, you're the one who's just wondering. They will come back. You know it happens to you, right? Good. Your thought can enter the gospel. So sometimes when you sit in church and you want to sit, just bind every thought. Mm, I bind every wandering thought. I've come to hear God's word. No. Your thoughts can hinder. It can hinder the truth of God's word. There are times when I'm studying the Bible. If it ever happens to me, if I'm studying the Bible and while I'm studying, and a thought just comes, when I'm done with that thought, I go back to that thing I was studying. I don't leave it. I always mark it. Because sometimes the thought comes just to hinder the revelation I'm about to see. I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. Thought. The next on the, my list is sensation. It's a part of your mind. There's another part of your mind called sensation. I'm giving you five areas, faculties of your mind, five parts of your mind. Sensation. A sensation is a physical feeling or perception resulting from something that happens to or comes into contact with the body. So sensation can just be a feeling. You know, in the way you look at somebody and just say, I don't just like that guy. I don't just like that lady. Why don't you like, I just, can't I just not like somebody? It could also be a feeling of fire you feel in your body. It can be spiritual. It can be physical. It can be emotional. These who can in that truth, they can in that the gospel. Someone looks at you and explains dominion to you. The guy used 100 Bible verse. He just said, I don't feel it is true. Are you not under attack? You touch your neighbor like this for me. Touch your neighbor for me. Somebody is sleeping. Touch Are you not under attack? 
touch your neighbor for me. Oh. Say, are you not under attack? Next time when you come to church, don't sit somebody you cannot touch. If you know you're afraid to touch the person, don't sit with the person. Are you not? <laughs> Thank you. You're not afraid to touch me. <laughs> Uh, I don't, he, he has explained everything. I don't feel it is true. I don't feel you. I don't just feel. Why? I don't just. Something in me just say that this is not. You are under attack, my brother. Mm-hmm. You are under attack. I don't just feel it is correct. I don't just feel it. Sensation. The last part of your mind, the, the fifth faculty of your mind that is very important is your will. Your will is the ability to choose. Your will is the ability to choose. For me, in my opinion, your will is the ultimate because without your will, you couldn't have gotten born again. When the gospel was preached to you, you used your will to accept the gospel as true. If there was no will, you couldn't have believed the gospel. It was your will that brought it to church. It was a will that made you believe the gospel. It's your will that makes you believe that man has dominion, if you believe so. It's your will that makes you believe that there is a witch in your village. It's your will. You have you use your will to choose, to decide whether an information is true or not. So your will has the ability to subject every listen carefully to this. Your will has the ability to subject every faculty of your mind, irrespective of what they have stored or what it has imagined or the thought in it. Your will has the ability to subject every faculty of your mind to believe that one information is true. So despite the fact that maybe I was raped by a pastor, despite the fact that uh, my parents practiced Christianity and it didn't look like it worked for them, despite the fact that there's a thought in my mind, despite the fact that I've imagined something about Brother David and he's preaching the gospel to me, I can still use my will and say, no, this is true. I believe. You can still use your will. So the reason you might be fighting with any part of the truth of God's word or the person you are discipling is fighting with any truth of God's word will be one of these areas that I've shown you. One of these areas I've shown you. And you know what the enemy does? It leverages on that part that he knows that there is an information, there is a memory, or there is a weakness in. This is how the hardness of the heart is produced. Hardness of the heart is one, not something spiritual that just dropped from heaven or dropped from hell. Mm-mm. When you find people, their heart hardened, this is how. The Pharaoh's heart hardened, this is how. So, if you are going to be not be the preacher, you will not, let me say this. Have you noticed that sometimes there are things that have been preached to you in the past? We have heard some things in the past. But suddenly, when another preacher explained it to you, you got to believe it. Has it ever happened to you? Maybe you listened to a sermon on something, on dominion. You didn't believe, you didn't really believe you, had, you have dominion in the earth. But when you listen to my series on dominion, I said, nah, no, I'm a king in the earth. Nah, king Zumbek. No, this is who I am. Why? Because the message came without cloudy perceptive. The message came with clarity. So the man preaching to a man whose mind is under any kind of attack must present the gospel in clarity. The enemy can cause blindness by making sure the message of the gospel is not delivered in clarity or clearly. This is how he hinders the understanding of the gospel. When you say, ah, you are preaching this gospel, I don't understand. The problem sometimes is that the man he's preaching, he said, does not even understand. Or the enemy is making sure that he's not delivering the gospel with clarity. When the gospel is delivered in clarity, the hindrance that can be caused by the enemy is reduced or removed. So to avoid the blindness that the enemy gives people when the gospel is preached, one thing we must do, we must pray for the preacher. We must pray for you discipling men. And we must pray for the listener. We must pray for your own delivery. 
that you are able to preach the gospel with with clarity not missing words not mixing after three days and on the third day not praise god you know you, now sometimes we may not understand something sometimes the reason i emphasize things so much when i preach is because of my encounters is me did you know that i did not know from scripture at first that jesus resurrected on the third day it was when i had an encounter with jesus that i told him that he be resurrected after three days he said me after three days he said no on the third day i'm sorry physical encounter i said ah. and i said check your bible and i went to check my bible and i said that it was actually on the third day so if you see me talk about on the third day on the third day it's not because i like the third day <laughs> no it's because it was such an error in my faith that he took the, an encounter with Jesus to correct and I don't want you to wait for an encounter before your own is corrected are you following me he was not resurrected after three days after three days he rose from death I've never seen a man who rose from death me I've seen yeah, yeah, for course, uh, yeah. Me, have you not seen many? Yeah, me, I've seen men that rose from dead after four days, actually. Oh, on the fourth day, I've seen. Me, I've seen. Because I don't know where you said that song. That song is not from, from the Bible. Uh, hallelujah. I'm sorry, it's not from the Bible. Apologies to the writer. He rose on. Shout it on. Good. There's something about the third day. There's something about it. As the son of man will be in the belly, as the son of man will be in the ground for three days, so was Jonah in the belly of the fish for three days. And that's what the Bible says on the third day. On the third day, not after three days. After three days could be after 700 years. If somebody tell you, I'll give you a phone after three days, be praying, just be praying, just forget about the phone. I'll give you a house after three days. Oh, better go and build your own house. Because the house can come after 1,000 years. After you are dead, you will not say, is there anybody in the house of Simeon <laughs> to give the house, I promise. Because I promise to give a house after three days. Today is after three days. How many days? How many years? 7,000 years. Come on, collect house. Say your great, great, great grandfather will collect house that they promised you. Mm. Ah, Jesus rose on the third day. Say he rose on the third day. He rose on the third day. There must be clarity in the presentation of the gospel. Your words must be exact. It's the year of the gospel for us. It must be exact. You must know what you are saying. And if they ask you to repeat it ten times, you repeat the same thing. If they ask you to preach it again, you preach the same thing. The same gospel to the prostitute. It's the same gospel to the banker. It's the same gospel to the one that is half saved. There's nothing like half saved. It means it has been in church for a long time, but it has not received Jesus. Uh -huh. The same gospel is the same to every man. Preach it again, it carries the same power. Just say it the way it is. Hallelujah. If there is blindness, it's because the enemy has entered in one way or the other through the mind. Through the mind this year you must own the gospel say i own the gospel you know the way you look at the church and say that is my church that is not it's not just our church it's my church i don't like saying it because i'm the pastor <laughs> but it is our church you we say that is my church that is my pastor you own the gospel you own the gospel i found the man that owned the gospel so well that everywhere he went he started telling people this is my gospel Paul will preach the gospel and say, this is my gospel. My gospel. It is my own good news. It's not different from the good news Jesus gave me. Mm -mm. It's the same good news, but it has become my good news. So I don't have another good news for you. It's my good news. Imagine getting to work on Monday and you're telling your friend, I got good news for you. Say, hey, what happened? Has he proposed? That's what he will say. Ah, have you gotten the iPhone? He said, I have a better good news. Are you serious? It's my good. Meet me in the kitchen. Or meet me at the lobby and the person comes and you see the person now did you know <laughs> yeah 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 did you know i say eh, no what <laughs> hmm. did you know 
I say, eh, I'd get with the age. Tell me now. Come with show. Uh, where is this? You will check your hand. Is it your hand? You will check your pulse. Is it a cat? Did you know? Ha. Ah, no what talk now. Eh, Fitz, what are you trying to say? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're doing me something. Did you know? Did you know? I found a lover. Eh? Eh. If you're a married woman, you say, ah. What oh, about the brother show? Leave brother show my side. I said I found the lover. This one is better than brother show. Hey, okay, tell me first, tell me first, tell me first. <laughs> and you present Jesus. He said he died for me. Ah, who killed him? <laughs> He's dead. Ah, but he rose again on the third day. Hey, when did the relationship start? Another person choose the person. <laughs> what are you talking about? So, but it's my good news. And I mean every word. Eh. This one is shocking you like this. There must be something special about this your good news. Are you ready to receive the same good news? You don't need to be dressed like a like anybody to. You can be if it's in your house, you can be wearing your short and your spaghetti you wear at home and preach the news. You don't need to go and dress up to preach the news. Ah, yeah, yeah. Did you hear me? Yeah. Mm, you don't need to. You don't need to. It's my good news. So Paul says to them, he said, now unto him who is able to establish you according to my good news, my gospel, my glad tidings. You know, I like the way this was translated. Some people thought, you know, I've heard some, some behind people say they got Christianity emanated from Paul. I said, you are not, you are not completely in your right mind. You are not, you are not, you need deliverance. He said, it emanated from Paul. Paul says, he said, Paul says, my gospel. I said, have you forgotten? Do you know, do you remember the Kai principle I taught you many years ago? Kai principle? K-A-I and what does it mean? That is. Paul says, according to my gospel and the what? Preaching of Christ Jesus. So what is my gospel? What is my gospel? Because when you say and the in your Bible, it means that is. Just know that. And the kai, it means that is. It's saying you are established according to my gospel. Lest you think I went to get another message. He said, that is the what? The preaching of Christ Jesus. So I will preach the gospel. I will disciple men. I will pray against the entrances of the gospel. In 2023, stand to your faith. Glory to Jesus. Mihi Fana. I'd like you to look at three persons in the room. Tell them, in 2023, I will not be shy about the gospel. That's one. Next person. Another person. I disciple men. You know this, you don't need to be perfect to, to preach the gospel. It's not the message of perfect people. Mm. It's just a message of sincere people. All you need is to be sincere. You don't need to be perfect. You don't need to change your hairstyle. Mm -mm. You don't need to change your dresses. Mm -mm. If you need to change those things, it means the gospel is not powerful enough. That you need to help it. You need to help it. For you to be powerful, ah, then you are the one getting them saved, not God. Then they are, they are they are receiving your life, not the life of Jesus. You don't need to. However, understand that the people that will hear it, you know, one of the reasons. Okay, let me say this. You know, one of the reasons God has given us different personalities is what we are going to preach to people of different personalities. So you you may not be attracted to my kind of personality, that you be attracted to. Maybe Bradewale's personality because he's the only handsome man in Nairobi. <laughs> God bless you. 
So you don't need to act in a particular way to, to preach the gospel. People have different personalities. So they might not like your personality. And the Bible did not say you should change your personality in preaching the gospel. No. There will be someone that will be receptive to your personality. So that gospel is for that person from your own lips. Are you following me? You don't. You don't need to. All you need is just to be bold about it. Praise God. All you need is to be bold about it. All you need is to decide to preach it. Hallelujah. Are you excited this morning? Lift your hands to heaven. Say, Father, I receive grace. I receive grace to preach the gospel boldly everywhere in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to preach the gospel everywhere in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to preach the gospel to my friends and my neighbors and disciple men in the name of Jesus. Come and decree those words now. Makina branda dos satadada shadahaya Meliko sadanina kistas e yenonde di brada dos satabaya akiga gas shatabande hisas munda na yikonde ida di satadas the higher oh necessity is laid on me to preach the gospel of Jesus enand di kados satadanda brada hash I'm bold about it I'm bold about it I'm bold about it I preach it this year in the name of Jesus I'm bold Bold about the gospel. Leleno zidi bande kika du sataya sina nina egedina ko sedi satavani kasas ayananda dina branda do zada zada dina ko zada dina kiga abana ko sada branda dina ko sedi sahaya. I am bold about the preaching of the gospel. I am bold about the preaching of the gospel. In the name of Jesus. Yende nina ko sada dina ko stahadi melakina. I disciple you. I disciple men. I receive grace to disciple men. I receive grace to disciple my friends. I receive grace to disciple my siblings. In the name of Jesus. In the new Sadabaya. Yeladida dos Sadadina Kos Sadadisus. Eyanada do Sadadon da Bahasasa. Yakadadon da Nikadon da Hazazoshaha. Medina Kos Sadadis Tostahaya. Melalon. Zondo dunu kuse iya nanda di zadaba zadada shahaya yekiga gasutu dunne abra nanu zadana kute te te ya yele shadaba nakaya lelekina kuse dadi shahaya. In Jesus' name, we're afraid. Say with me, Father, in the name of Jesus. I receive grace never to be shy with the gospel of Jesus. I receive grace never to be shy with the gospel of the kingdom. I preach it boldly everywhere in the name of Jesus. Come and decree those words now. I disciple men in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Agiga gis soto branda da satabaya ayana konza da dina kine kuza kadena ayena ke zoto nda ha ma ye koza da dena kuza ha medi vidi ku medi vidi kuza da da branda nina kiza da diate maziki di kato kosa da da ya meda koza na dina kosa iyana noza na ni koza da ba shadaba ne kone akega giga dosa da dena kini I a coast shut up on the dinner coast at the dinner hostels. A ya coast shut up on the Nico shut up on the Kiga. I am on the shut up on the case. I receive boldness in the name of Jesus. I'm not shy. I will disciple many. I will disciple friends. I will disciple siblings in the name of Jesus. I will teach them what I know about Jesus. A ya coast shut up on the necessity is laid on me now. Necessity is laid on me now. Necessity is laid on me now. Hey, I 
In Jesus' name, we are prayed. 